Hey guys, my name is Bob Lee, and welcome back to another video. So, as you can see, we are playing the Paolo, Paolo Emilio, also known as the YOLO Emilio, and we're playing ranked because I, I, I've never really liked the Paolo Emilio. So I thought, why not play my diamond placement game in ranked with the Paolo Emilio and see how it does? Really good idea. Well, actually, it turned out to be quite fun, and I decided to show two games that I had. Now, the Paolo Emilio still has its turret bug, or torpedo bug. Torpedo turret bug, where you have to click a bunch of times and wait for it to come back around. Which is super annoying, but the torpedoes deal a bunch of damage. And if you can get the drop on some BBs in this thing, you, you can have quite a lot of fun and deal a lot of damage in a short amount of time. So, as you can see, the Paolo, without any... I'm not running speed mod, you will see my build at the end. It's a... Uh, double steering and then I think I have turret traverse and then I'm running my Regolo commander on this but yeah you can if you are interested in that it's gonna be at the end of the games so we caught B and uh, now we're just gonna move close because I see there's an Alsace behind this rock and I'm thinking if I use this island in front of him or between me and him I can actually use that as cover so I won't be detected for as long and just you know, get get the drop on this guy. The Jutland is pretty far away, uh, and he, he won't be able to detect me just yet. But as you can see, the Palo Emilio's detection range is horrendous, and so is the gun range. But I could have run surface detection. I chose not to just simply because this thing turns like a brick, and I'd rather have the ability to maybe get my you know other side of torpedoes off. Paolo Emilio has a set on each side and then it has a middle set as you can see now we get two sides off on the Alsace here and you can see the speed boost four really helped us we're cranking almost 50 knots 47 in a turn which is quite impressive and we just took 40,000 damage from that Alsace which uh, is also quite good now I'm counting on my team to actually kill him here but it does take quite a while so we have to cross our fingers and hope for the best while we sail away from this Elsass. There's also a Kiev just spamming us, but we'll have to ignore him for now. It seems the Elsass is done, and we are out of here. 50k damage. Now, I have a choice. I could either go into B with my team, or I could flank around. It all it all depends on this Kiev what, and, and what he does. So, I'm kind of waiting to see what, it, was it, what his plan is. He doesn't look to be looking my direction. So, I'm sailing further out, waiting for my detection, and then, then I'm going to turn back in. We are also not on that much HP, so if this Kiev decides to turn around, well then we're dead. I believe in the Palo Emilio, you gotta be really, really patient. And I think that was the problem with my playstyle before. I just went YOLO without even thinking about it because, well, that's what it's supposed to do. This thing will not one-shot a BB with just two torpedo salvos. You have to get the third off, um, but it does quite good damage and it definitely hurts them. So what you want to do is create a situation where the team is focusing, the enemy team, sorry, is focusing your team. Like, look at this. They're all focusing the other direction. They completely forgot about me because I looked like I was sailing off the map. And then, you know, I disappeared. So now they can focus my team. And we're going to try to get all sets off here. One for the Iowa. I was deciding on the Kiev, but these are pretty slow, so I chose not to. One for this guy, and here we see the bug. It's super annoying. I could have killed this crunch start, but yeah, we didn't. But we got the Iowa, and I'm oh, sorry, the Missouri, and we took half the crunch start's health. So 98k damage for the first game here. It, it's a fast one too. I mean, it only took what three minutes. <laughs> it's it's pretty much over. This guy's gonna lose, and oh, sorry, he's gonna sink, and we're gonna win so a pretty good game so yellow beard in his crunch start will go down here and this is the win for our team and i actually got into diamond now i don't think this is special i mean it didn't it wasn't too hard for me at least now i don't want to sound like an idiot um but please tell me those of you who actually play ranked is it easy or is it hard i don't know i just played uh mostly i played just because i wanted to play my tier nines without being annoyed by tier tens so yeah that there's that but let's hop into the next game here. Now, this one I didn't get the loading screen, so you're gonna see it here in a second, I, I think. Yeah, if, if previous, uh, past Bob, yeah, there we go. So it's a CV game, and 
there is, you know, both cruisers and there's a Lepanto and a Marlboro on the enemy team. Both ships could potentially nuke me in one salvo if I'm not careful enough. So I'm kind of hesitant to actually go A, and I remember I was thinking, should I go B instead to stay undetected for a longer while? But then I saw my Seattle was pushing with me, and then, you know, you, you can't just leave your teammate behind. And there's only five people in this, so I, I thought, okay, we're going to we're gonna do it. But the detection on this thing just makes it so, you know, unattractive to push into any cap because you just feel like you might, you know, get blapped instantly. Um, we get spotted by something, and I'm like, what, what, what could spot me? I'm behind a rock. But, and luckily we go undetected, but there is a DD in here as we can see because the cap is contested right now. And honestly, I don't want to deal with the DD. The Palo Emilio has sap guns and they're big, but the reload's pretty slow. And the guns turn so slowly, it's insane. Um, now I actually can't remember if I ran reload or turret traverse. I guess we'll have to see at the end of the video. But either way, these it's not the guns you play this ship for. It's this you can do right here. So what we're doing now is we see this Marlboro. He is alone on this island. He's isolated. He's probably focusing something else. And we decide to use our speed boost to catch his his flank. Um, and we're coming in fast. 47 knots in the turn. We, don't, we haven't used our smoke yet. And we're still detected. But, you know, I don't think he's noticing us just yet. Here he comes. Mr. Marlboro, I could have shot here, but I was just going to wait a little bit and see how he turned. So we shoot our torpedoes, and now we hope for the best. I was hoping he didn't have his guns turned. It seems he didn't because he was focusing something else. And the man just barely survived, but here comes a sap shell into your bow, and, well, at that range, it always hurts. So you can see, you could pretty much nuke a BB here at tier 9 easily i mean they it won't one shot two salvos but it, it's close enough for me so we get the big old paulo turning around and i'm looking over at my bookie thinking is he gonna take that is he gonna win that 1v1 and he luckily does ras good job he uh he managed to survive and take out the dd so now we're completely covered on this flank and we just have to push in and the the paulo emilio is as you can see like i said a very fast ship 43.6 knots out the gate is not bad. This is, of course, fully upgraded, but no speed mod. And we still have three speed boosts left, so there's nothing to worry about. About Now the cruiser is also down, so we're looking good here. Now I see my Lepanto is going to go mid and fight the other Lepanto, so I'm going to go around this island and get the drop on him if I can. Now the Lepanto has sap, so if he sees me coming, I could be gone. But it's all good. We uh, we're gonna we're gonna be fine here. We use our fuel smoke, and when you're going with 52 knots, it's all good. You know, you can you can get to your target very quickly. And there he is. Now we're full HP, but that could change very quickly if he does have his guns turned. He doesn't seem to be, which uh, which is very good for us. Now that's a full salvo of torpedoes, but he's not even close to being dead. Lepanto is a strong BB, so. Now I'm just hoping for the best and just trying to get out of here in, as fast as possible. Just just running as far away from, you know, behind him as I can so he can't turn his turrets. I see my Lepanto is moving in and at least he's going to get him. I'm probably just going to try to get away since there's no reason for me to die to this guy. And who do we have on our port side? That is the Essex. Now we're already super low and unfortunately I kind of griefed for these uh, torpedoes on the Essex and I, I ran straight into those torpedoes but it's all good we're <laughs> gonna get four up into this guy and I mean that's a still 106,000 damage and a very quick game again this thing is an assassin in ranked it's super fun and honestly I was surprised I'm gonna keep playing this in tier 9 ranked uh, to have some fun once in a while it's really good I can highly recommend it if you have it Alright, so that was it for the two games. Here's my setup on Paolo. For the elite bonus, I went for gun operator, but I would definitely take torpedo operator. Like we said, this is a torpedo ship mainly. Uh, it can definitely fight DDs, but to be honest, the, the turret traverse doesn't change. That's my equipment setup. I ran with reload and double steering, and we have Paolo, Paolo Town Direbel, who is a semi-DD commander. He's pretty good. Uh, I really enjoy him. Um, He's really good for the Paolo. Uh, I think he's made for the Paolo, actually. But anyways, great commander. 
that's been it for this video. I hope you enjoyed. My name has been Bubbly, and as always, I am signing out. Thank <laughs> you.